Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Selenium with CSharp.net. And this lecture will be talking about data-driven testing using NUnit and how we can make use of NUnit to pass a data source to our Selenium test. So if you remember in our last lecture while we were discussing about the test fixture, we passed the username and password from the test fixture pretty much like a data-driven testing to be honest, right? We tried to pass even admin with password one admin and password to and they were all working fine for the tests that we have got but it is not something that we need to pass it from the test fixture itself because test fixture should be used as a setup for the entire test but not to pass a data to it so for example if your test is going to be responsible for running only in for example chrome browser then you can set the test fixture with the chrome in here or you can pass the environment variables or the secrets within your test so that you can use it. That's how you should use the test fixture itself. So it's not something to be used as a data-driven testing stuff. Rather, it should be used as a setup for your test. Well, as I said, I'm going to get rid of this username and password from the test fixture over here. And I'm going to start using some other fixture within NUnit. But guess what, I'm not going to touch this file because I'm going to leave this file for now. And I'm going to create another class file and call it as data driven testing. And I'm going to copy paste all these codes that we have over here, but just that I don't really need the constructor. So I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm going to make this as public. And I'm going to get rid of this test, which we don't really require. And we only have this particular test, the test with page object model. Now I'm going to do a data driven testing for this particular test. And I'm going to call this category as DDT, just in case so that we can run this in command line as well, like how we discussed in our last lecture. So now I need to pass the username and password over here. If you remember, we removed these properties from here and we don't even have the test fixture attribute in this class file. So that's not going to be applicable for this particular login method. So how do I get the data source for this? Well, you remember, we also discussed in our last lecture that we can use something called as test case where we can pass the username and password over here. But if it is just two variable or two parameter that you need to pass in, which should be pretty much good enough. But not every time, right? We need to have multiple different operations to be performed and there will be multiple different parameters to be passed in, not just the username and password all the time. So in order to overcome this, we have something called as test case source over here. So this test case source is so good that it can help you provide a source of data to the test fixture instance of a test class. So what does that really mean? Well, you can pass the test case source and you can see for the test case source over here, we need to pass a type of and the source itself. So the source, as you can see the definition of this test case source, if I just go right click and go to the definition, it will tell you that you need to pass a type of the source in it. And that type can be of an object type really, but it says system.type, but it can, it should be of an I enumerable type so that it can iterate through all the data in it. So the way that which I'm going to do it over here is I'm going to create a method. I'm going to call this as public static I enumerable, and I need to create a type over here. So I don't really have any type like login or something like that. So while I say type in C sharp, it's always like the type like Chrome driver, or the iWeb driver, something like that. So these are all types, and even the login page that we created, remember, it is also a type that we have got. So similarly, I need to create a type because that's what the test case source expects us to pass in. So for that reason, I'm gonna create a simple class file, and I'm gonna call this as login model. And this login model, it's gonna be public, and it's going to have two properties. One is the username and another one is the password. So the way I create a property in C sharp is just put prop and you will see that there is going to be a code snippet for property comes in, which is very, very handy. I always use that. So I'm going to say 
string of username and similarly i am to create one for the password so now i have a login model with the username and the password so this is a type that i need because that's what i need to enter within my test over here so once i have the type i can now create a method something like public static i enumerable of the type as login model and i'm going to say login over here so now what this thing is going to do this method is going to do it is i need to return an enumerable type of the login model every time while i call within this particular test case source it's pretty much like an yield type that i have to return again yield type in c sharp is something which is going to be called every time while there is going to be an enumeration happens and it is going to call exactly all the data in the enumeration in the perfect order because this test case source itself is going to be calling each and every of them in the iteratable fashion i know it's going to be kind of confusing for the first time but once you start getting used to it you feel that it is quite easy and straightforward so what i really mean about yielding over here is i just have to use this keyword called as yield i have to call a return and i'm going to say new login model see that automatically the intellisense is bringing up all the details for me and over here in the login model i need to return the value which is going to be the username as admin and the password as the password and because the username and password we have created as a string type in the login model over here it's going to just work as expected so that's all looking quite good so now this is the data source that i was talking about now this is going to act like a data source so you can keep creating multiple number of yield returns over here so that it can be like multiple data set that you wanted to create you can do all of them over here and then you can pass it but for now we already have this particular login method now i can just pass the login over here and it will start working but guess what we are getting an error here because i have used the login method straight away over here instead of using it in a separate class a separate type instead of using a type of keyword we can also use something called as name of keyword so this is going to be like a name of that particular method or the data source that we are looking at and once i do that we're still getting an scroll line there and tells me that the test case source provides one parameter but the test method expects zero parameter which means we need to pass the login model as the parameter over here if not this compliance over here but now see that once i pass the parameter it is working fine because the output of this particular source is a login model type even though it's an i enumerable type it's going to iterate anyways so now we have the login model how do i pass the username and password guess what it's very straightforward just use the login model dot and you get the username and similarly you can say login model dot password for the password that you need to enter so this is how we can use the test case source to pass all the data right from this particular source so now if i try to save this entire code and if i go to the test explorer go to the data driven testing and if i run the test you will notice that the browser is opened and it should enter the username and password as admin and admin or password there we go just got completed there and it just worked fine and if i try to make the username as admins and if i try running the data driven testing once again you will notice that the test should eventually fail because the username admins is not going to work as expected you see that the username is admins and yeah the test just passes anyways because we have not did any assertion but you got the point this is how the data is actually coming from and this is how you can keep entering the value and the last operation before we wind up is what if i want to return other details like username password with multiple different combination how do i do it well all you have to do is just copy this paste it over here something like this and just change the password maybe admin as admin2 and admin3 something like that save this and now if i try to run the test over here you will notice that the same test is going to keep running 
but with different data set. For example, the first test is going to be with admin and password as password, but for the second test, it is going to enter the data with admin2 and password is something like this. So this is happening because now we have a data-driven testing from the data source that we have defined and it's all going to be working for us over here. So you see that all the tests got executed like one, two, and three, and we could able to see them in the test detail summary of Visual Studio 2022, which is awesome. It is just working fine as expected how it should be. And this is how the test case source attribute of NUnit helps us to perform data-driven testing in much, much easier fashion.